Section 1.5, Solving Inequalities. The objectives for today are to solve and graph inequalities and to write and solve compound inequalities. So the first thing you have to remember is what an inequality is. Um, rather than an equation having an equal symbol, it has one of these symbols. Uh, this one is greater than, less than, greater than or equal, and less than or equal. So with those um, symbols, um, there's some symbols that you need to know when you put them on a number line as well. Uh, the greater than or less than have an open circle. Here, let me do that with a different color. So those have an open circle, and then when you're doing these on the graph, they have a filled-in circle. So problem number one, what inequality represents the sentence five fewer than a number and is at least 12? So we've got a few things we need to figure out before we actually write anything down. What does fewer than mean and what does at least mean? So fewer than means subtraction. At least is going to be either, uh, it's going to be one of these inequalities that we wrote above. So when you are looking at a subtraction question, um, you have to kind of pay attention to how it's written. This says five fewer than a number. That means that five is being taken away from that number that we have, and that's going to be a variable. So it's going to be n minus five um, is at least 12. So we're going to put an inequality in there, and it has to be less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. Um, when you're looking at is at least, to me that means that 12 is the smallest number that's possible, which means you want to go over that. So it's going to be greater than or equal to 12. So there's your inequality. You can pause the video now and try got it question number one on your own and then come back and check your answer. What inequality represents the sentence, the quotient of a number and three is no more than 15. So first we have to figure out what quotient is, that is division. And then no more than 15 means that the top number um, or the number that is the highest is 15. So 15 is the highest number, and you need to go under that. So your inequality is going to look like this. Quotient means division, and that division symbol replaces the symbol or the word and. So a number, we don't know what that is, divided by 3. No more than 15 means it has to be under 15, so we're going to go less than or equal to 15. So a number divided by 3 is less than or equal to 15. Um, here are some properties of inequalities. You can sure write these down in your notebook if you want to. Um, you might have to identify properties. Um, you wouldn't have to spell out what they are. Excuse me. You just have to know how to use them and how to identify them. So the transitive property is as follows, if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, then A is greater than C. So notice how the B's are the same. Well, if you kind of replace them and you read which one was first and which one was last, um, then A has to be bigger than C as well. Addition, if A is greater than B, then if you add something 
to both sides, that's kind of what it looks like. It would be A plus C must still be bigger than B plus C. Subtraction is the same. So you start out with A is greater than B. If you subtract that same quantity from both sides, that's what it looks like. Multiplication, same thing. If you have A is greater than B and C is greater than zero, then AC is greater than BC. If you have A is greater than zero, or A is greater than B as C is under zero, notice how this symbol switches because then it would be, um, it would change that right side to a negative number, um, or the left side to a negative number, and it wouldn't be bigger than it anymore. Division, uh, same type of thing. If you divide uh, both quantities by C, uh, the symbol stays the same. However, if C is negative, that's when it changes. This symbol right here changes as well. So problem number two, what is the solution of negative 3 times the quantity 2x minus 5 plus 1 greater than or equal to 4 and graph the solution. So the first thing we need to do is look at the left side. We need to simplify a little bit, so we will take care of this part right here. Distributive property says negative 3 times 2x and negative 3 times negative 5. So we have a negative 6x. Negative 3 times negative 5 would be plus 15 plus 1 greater than or equal to 4. So now we need to get like terms um, together. Negative 6x plus 16 is greater than or equal to 4. Then we subtract 16 from both sides, um, which would give me negative 12. When I divide by a negative 6, this symbol flips over. So whenever I divide by that negative number, I always circle that so that I remember that it does switch directions. So in this one, I've already made a little mistake, so I'm going to go back and erase that. Um, I did circle it so that it means to flip the other direction, so I'm going to change that right now before I graph. So it should be x is less than or equal to 2. So I need to put 2 in the middle. I need one number to the left of it and one number to the right of it. Numbers to the left of two are smaller. Numbers to the right of two are bigger. So I need to fill in the two because it does say equal to. And this one says all numbers that are less than are equal to two. So I'm going to shade this one to the left. It does keep on going, so I'm going to fill in the arrow. Make sure that when you're shading, um, it does. you can tell which direction you're shading as well. Uh, you can pause the video now and practice got it question number two and then check to see if you got the answer right. What is the solution of negative 2 times the quantity x plus 9 plus 5 greater than or equal to 3 and graph it? So again, we're first going to take care of the distributive property, uh, negative 2 times x and negative 2 times 9. Um, we're going to put like terms together on the left. Negative 2x minus 13 greater than or equal to 3. We're going to add 13 to both sides. And we're going to divide by negative 2. Again, we're dividing by a negative number, which flips that inequality symbol over. Um, so be careful of that when you write it in the answer. So this one looks like it's going to be x is less than or equal to 8. And then we will graph it as well. And I forgot my negative symbol there. So again, the number that you're talking about goes in the middle. We need two numbers, one on either side. So numbers that are getting smaller are to the left, so that would be negative 9, negative 10, and so on. Numbers that are getting bigger are to the right, which would be negative 7, negative 6, negative 5, all up to 0. Since it's equal to, we're going to fill in the point on negative 8, and we are going to shade to the left again one more time. The only difference would be is if this was x is less than negative 8, I would do an open circle right there. Um, so that would be the only change that you'd have to make if it was strictly a less than. 
Problem number three, a movie rental company offers two subscription, subscription plans. You can pay $36 a month and rent as many movies as you want, or you can pay $15 a month and $1.50 to rent each movie. How many movies must you rent in a month for the first plan to cost less than the second plan? So plan one needs to be less than plan two. And we will write those equations now. So plan one, you pay $36 a month. You can rent as many movies as you want to, so there's no extra fees or anything. So plan one is just strictly $36. Plan one needs to be less than the second plan. You pay $15 a month and $1.50 to rent each movie. So you need to know how many movies you have. So it's going to be a flat $15 and $1.50 per movie. So we'll get like terms on the same side, so we'll subtract 15 from both sides. Uh, 36 minus 15, we get 21, is less than $1.50 times the number of movies that you buy. We will divide by $1.50 for each side, and we get 14. Okay, now I generally like the variable to be on the left side, so when you... Um, are trying to figure out how many and read it, you're going to say, I'm going to just flip the whole thing over. So I'm going to reverse so that the variable is on the left. And that says M is greater than 14 movies. So how many movies must you rent in a month for the first plan to cost less than the second plan? Um, you need to rent more than 14 movies. If you rent 13 movies, then it doesn't pay. You can pause right now and try got it question number three, and then you can go back and check your answer. A digital mu music service offers two subscription plans. The first has a $9 membership fee and charges $1 per download. The second has a $25 membership fee and charges 50 cents per download. How many songs must you download for the second plan to cost less than the first plan? So we want the second one to be less than the first one. So we're going to look at the second plan first. We're going to put that on the left. So we have a $25 membership fee. So you're going to pay that one time and it charges 50 cents per download. So 50 cents times X. X is going to equal the downloads. Um, it's going to be less than the first plan has a $9 membership fee so that you pay one time and it charges $1 per download. Um, now what we're going to do is solve it to see how many we need to buy. So we're going to put like terms on the same side. So I'm going to get the X's on the left and the numbers on the right or you could go numbers on the left um, X is on the right. It doesn't really matter uh, which way you do that. So let's go numbers on the left because then they'll be positive. So I'm going to subtract 9. So we get 16, 50 cents X less than X. And you can put a 1 there if you wish. We're going to subtract 50 X from both sides. So if we divide 16 by a half, we're going to get 32. And again, the variable's on the right, so to switch it around, you flip the whole inequality symbol over, so we reverse it. So it's going to be x is greater than 32 downloads. So in order for to make this work, you're going to have to rent more than 32 um, videos. Problem number four, is the inequality always, sometimes, or never true? We're going to uh, simplify each side, uh, and we're not going to um, change sides. So let me show you um, what we're talking about first. All right, so distributive property, negative 6x minus 2 is greater than negative 6x plus 7. 
we notice that on the left we have negative 6x minus 2. On the right we have negative 6x plus 7. Those two things are not the same. But if we take it one step further and we get the x's on the same side, that leaves us with negative 2 is greater than 7, um, which is false. So we're going to say this one is never true. Um, when you're looking at the item on before it, you can kind of say, is negative 6x minus 2 going to be greater than negative 6x plus 7? You can kind of see those two items um, don't match from there. Let's try another one. So let's try another one. Wow, this is really kind of good and weird. Okay, so distributive property on the left, 10x. Distributive property, we have 10x minus 15 minus 7x less than or equal to 3x plus 8. Put like terms together. On the same side, we have 10x minus 7x. That's 3x. Notice again that the three x's match on either side. If we subtract them, they will disappear. Then we'll have negative 15 less than or equal to 8, which is a true statement. So this one is going to be always true. So whatever we plug into this one, um, it will make it a true statement. You can pause here and practice got it question number four. Um, is it always, sometimes, or never true? Then get back and check your answer. Distributive property on both sides. 4 times 2x would be 8x. 4 times negative 3 would be negative 12. Less than 8 times x plus 8 times 1. Uh, if we get the 8x's on the same side, they disappear. And is negative 12 less than 8? It's a true statement. And every single number that you plug in here will always work. Problem number five, what's the solution of this inequality? It has an and in the middle. And graph the solution. Let's move to the next one. Notice that there's an or in the middle. An or, we have to include both, um, both graphs. And sometimes they overlap, sometimes they are going in either direction. So we need to include one or the other. So in the first one, we're going to subtract 7. K is greater than or equal to negative 1. Or K is less than, we're going to subtract 8, which gives me negative 5. We need both those numbers on the graph. I'm going to go one further. So I'm going to start with negative 6, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, and 0. So this one says I'm going to fill it in at negative 1, and that one's going to go to the right. And the other one says I have an open circle since it's strictly less than negative 5 and shade to the left. Now notice that those don't overlap at all, so we need to include both of those. So we're going to shade from negative 5 to the left, filling it in because it does keep going. And we're also going to shade to the right and fill in that arrow as well. And that's it. So bring your questions tomorrow where we'll practice more and we'll work on your assignment together.